you don't want to have a kitchen that is too precious, you can't put a hot saucepan anywhere. It really needs to be functional because we're all time poor and we really need it to work in the most seamless way, I think. From the moment I set in and knew that a lot of the original features were in here, it became really exciting and I sort of knew that it had the bones to become an amazing home. The room was a very 80s kitchen. There was also a big wall halfway through the room, so it was really dark. Instantly I sort of knew that we would take down that wall and make the space one big room. We set about really mapping out the kitchen so it could have the most maximum space for socialising and sitting around, but also be a really functional room. So we worked on that layout for a while and then one night we came over here in the freezing cold and I drew everything on the wall and it sort of felt like a much more cohesive layout. Because I'm so analogue, I used masking tape to map out how the outline would look of the different appliances and the fridge against the sink and whether it needed to be balanced out with a cupboard the other side the same height. And once you can start imagining that, it really begins to take shape. I think it's really important to evaluate like how you are as a cook and how you are as a family and how you entertain. One of the sort of earliest design elements that we, we wanted to do was to house our oven into the chimney breast because it would conceal the often ugly extractor fans above. This is where the oven was before and it felt like a perfect place to put it, sort of housed in the chimney breast. And I decided to go floor to ceiling tiles. I'd seen a kitchen reference from a home in Morocco with really beautiful glazed checkerboard tiles in contrasting colours. It's about 10 square metres here when you include all the nooks and crooks. So I had to sort of work backwards on a budget. This red I love with the white and it's kind of quite a classic look, I suppose. There was quite a large downstairs bathroom which wasn't really needed because all we really needed was a loo and a sink. So we split that room into two and entered the other half into the kitchen which allowed walk-in pantry storage room. It's probably the most frequented in the whole house despite it being about one metre square. So this is part of the kitchen, but I wanted to have a space that you could kind of shut the doors and have everything out and messy. Um, and I discovered coloured grout, which I'm quite obsessed with. Coloured grout came from Amazon and I actually didn't really know much about it other than you can get varying colours of grey, say. And in fact, you can get like every colour under the sun and I think it's a really fun way of, you know, just adding in a bit of detail. We used some old, some of the floorboards that were left over and created these really narrow shelves just so you can have really easy access to everything. I'm just in the process of deciding what fabric is going to go here as a bit of a skirt, just because it was far cheaper to do that than to build cupboard doors. Granite in the kitchen, I'd seen some really nice references where I thought it looked really smart. It's obviously significantly cheaper than marble, but I also kind of like the difference of having this sort of really dark worktop with the quite bright tiles and these light walls. And I love that you kind of can happily cut anything on the worktops without sort of worrying and you kind of almost want them to age a little bit. I had this view that I'd sort of always be very tidy washing up and never splash on the walls or anything, which a couple of months into moving in, I realized was very unrealistic. At a later stage, we added an extra piece of granite. And I thought this was actually quite a nice opportunity to add some detail. So I created this kind of scalloped dome, which frames the sink almost, and it becomes a bit of a focal point. I found a stonemason who very patiently 
followed a cardboard cutout of this flashback here. And it's really fun, you know, like I kind of wish I thought of it from the beginning and I think that's how houses sometimes do, they evolve over time as you learn the practicality and um, how rooms work and function. I'm a big believer in drawers and I think particularly in a kitchen with pots and pans. It's really useful to be able to access the full space. So we have two very deep drawers with a hidden cutlery drawer in that and that really serves for all our saucepans and pots and pans. And then I like to sort of mix it up so we have open storage, some slatted shelves which again felt a bit more light and breezy in design and that really is the main storage in the kitchen. I chose pale blue for the walls that I thought I loved on paper, I loved on the swatches on the walls. And I just walked into the room and the room felt very oppressive and very dark and it, it just didn't work. And sometimes I think you just have to go with your gut. I went totally the other end of the spectrum and went for a sort of a plaster-esque colour. I'd come across this brand of paint called Bowick, which is a lime wash paint, so it's, it's very watery in consistency, mixed in with this sort of um, quite grainy sand. So it's got a really nice natural finish, and it's in fact totally natural paint. I think adding these sort of one-off pieces of furniture into a kitchen can really help soften the edges of traditional cabinets and joinery. Rather than having a, a, a kitchen island, which a lot of people have, I found an old wooden butcher's block and I've always imagined we'd have a piece of furniture in the middle of the kitchen that wasn't a fitted piece of furniture. As it's been here, it's sort of evolved and it feels, you know, it fits perfectly now. It's relatively skinny. And so it really is just a chopping block and somewhere to put things. I didn't want to have, again, like a continuous fitted kitchen that housed all of sort of my glasses and stuff. And I'd always imagined having some unit here. I've lined it in one of my favorite wallpapers, um, a little thumbnail print from 36 How. And it sort of adds a bit of charm to it and kind of makes it feel a bit more elevated. I love the idea of having someone being able to perch up against the kitchen unit and have a glass of wine while someone chats while the other one cooks. And so I came across these swing seats. They traditionally have them in a lot of like Japanese takeaway sushi restaurants. And they are a perfect place to perch, but they can be pushed away. So I wanted the seating around the dining table to be really comfy and for it to be a place where people could happily spend hours. So I wanted a table that could accommodate just myself and my husband in the evenings, in the week, but also be able to fit 12, 14 people around at the weekends. I think a bonquette or a sort of bench of some form lends itself very well because it doesn't mean that in the week you're sitting there with 12 other chairs empty around you. In the kitchen, we put on the bonquette, and I love the effect that they're kind of like sofas, so you can really kind of kick off your shoes and curl up. I upholstered them in denim, which was just quite a low-cost material and something that sort of is really heavyweight and can serve the test of time. I think it's important to have that mix of lights at all different angles and to think about the purpose. You know, in the evening you want it to be very atmospheric and just to have a few lamps and wall lights, but in the day you want it to be bright. I've incorporated different types of lighting, so we have overhead spots. On a dark day it really serves a purpose, but then we have much more stylized kind of Italian style wall lights. I recommend using energy saving bulbs and a renewable energy supply like Ovo Energy. Often the smallest things that can add a massive impact. I think having lamps on, on your kitchen countertops 
can really add character to a room and in fact I actually often swap around the lamps that I have on my countertop and it's amazing how such a small thing can suddenly change the feel of a room. This room has changed so much over the last few years and I'm sure it will change many times more. In the next episode, I'll be talking about my bedroom and bathroom. <laughs>